How many characters do you need to solve a crime in a small town? The answer is plenty, but your protagonist, not so much. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I would like to talk about Cottage on Gooseberry Bay, Halloween Moon by Kathy Daly. After her father's death, Ainsley moves to Gooseberry Bay to research a house and the town that she believes has ties to her birth parents. She's in town for a little over a day, preparing her research and moving into the cottage she's renting, when Cammy, a girl she met at the grocery store, gets murdered. While the prime suspect's family tries to suppress his involvement with their money and influence and tries to pass it off as an accident, Ainsley and her new neighbors decide it's time for them to investigate themselves. Ainsley is an alright character insofar as she treats her dogs well, she saves a kitten at some point, and she's a bit smarter than quite a few protagonists I've read in Cozy Mysteries over the last couple of months. But she's not as proactive as you would like in a protagonist. A good deal of the investigation is done by her neighbors and new friends instead of her, and they might have as well cracked the case without her involvement. Ainsley has a couple of issues that annoyed me a bit while reading her story. While she's looking into the house that she believes she knows from her dreams, she checks out pictures of the two brothers that live there right now. And she looks at one of them and it's like, I felt immediately drawn to Adam. I'm like, oh god, no, miss me with that Insta attraction bullshit. And then a little bit later she meets Mike in the hardware store and is instantly attracted to him. And contemplates whether it would be a good idea to start anything because she's only there for a couple of months. And I was sitting there like, girl, girl, you're talking to this guy in the hardware store. It's like small talk. He wasn't propositioning you or anything. Nothing in that direction has happened, not for sex, let alone for a relationship. And I don't know where you're going with this, but calm down. Yeah, but in case you may have thought, like me, for a second that you're safe from this Insta attraction, whatever, over pictures, you know, not even the person but pictures. No, no, it turns out that the guy in the hardware store is Adam. I don't know why the guy who's supposedly a rich businessman would be working in the hardware store randomly in the middle of the day, or why she would not recognize him from the pictures. I can't tell you either, but everything's safe because the only guy she's attracted to is Adam. And uh, yeah. Adam is actually an alright character, and if he reciprocates those feelings, then you don't see much of that in the first book. Which is alright by me, because I'm quite happy to read something without a romance in it from time to time. Yeah. But, yeah. Ainsley will probably wrestle with her idea of not being in Gooseberry Bay for long enough to actually have a relationship with him, but then she will go for it anyway, and it will be unnecessary drama. But, yeah. Because the way she's moving into the cottage now, and the way she's getting along with all her neighbors, just makes me think that... The whole series will end with her just staying in Gooseberry Bay anyway. But I've only read the first book. Can't promise anything. It's just a prediction. Yeah, so overall, while Ainsley is the one who brings up the idea that they should investigate themselves, she herself doesn't do an awful much during it. It's like her reporter friend Patty and her neighbors Josie and Gemma who do all of the talking to people, hacking places, interviewing people, researching. The one bit that Ainsley contributes is going to the sheriff's office to give a statement because she watches the prime suspect leave the grocery store after talking to the victim. So she goes there, starts crying in his office, makes him leave the office to get her some water and then takes pictures of the coroner's report and other stuff on the desk. I'm like, is this how private investigators are supposed to work? It's all pretending, lying and cheating and not like actually interviewing or researching. So, okay. okay. Yeah, so while Ainsley used to work as a PI together with her ex-cop dad, 
you only hear from another character. I'll just read this out. Ainsley is an experienced PI who used to be a reporter, so I'm sure she has a few tricks up her sleeve. You don't see any of those tricks, really, aside from crying in the sheriff's office. And I don't know, I think I could do that too. I, I doubt I'll be convincing. So I guess she can do acting a bit. I don't know. I don't have an awful lot to say about the other characters. Most of them seemed like fairly nice people, but there were too many of them. Like you get to meet all of the neighbors, which is like six or eight people already. Then the people who work at the bar, the people at the hardware store, the people at the grocery store. And I'm just like, do I actually need to remember all of these people? And then a lot of them start like with the same letter. And if a character is not built up to the extent that I can actually tell them apart, then this is confusing as heck. Josie and Gemma, starting with those neighbors that always tend to turn up in twos as well. Yeah, and um, oh, then in relation to the victim, there's Heather, Haley, and Hillary. Two of them are friends of the victim, and the other one is a potential suspect, but don't ask me which one because I couldn't tell them apart. Obviously, they don't come up much, and I think I'm not even sure you meet any of them in person ever. It's just like Ainsley's friends telling her what these guys said to them. So I can't really picture these characters and as such I kept confusing them whenever a new letter, like a new name started with age, I'm like, oh god, which one is this? Wasn't it a suspect a minute ago? Oh no, that's a friend. And I was like, huh? Yeah, there were too many, too many characters for my taste. As for the world building, Gooseberry Bay is just like a small American town. Sounds kind of quaint and somewhat nice. The rich asshole who has the sheriff in his pocket and gets to do whatever aside. Nice show of corruption there. Nothing is as quaint as it seems. I was a tad confused about the size of the town though. The day after Halloween they hang out in the park for a picnic or something. And she says there are like eight volleyball fields. I'm like wow eight fields that seems like a lot for a small town. Unless you're all crazy about volleyball that seems like a lot of space to be taken up for that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know the US has a lot more space than anything Europe has, but eight volleyball fields, is that doesn't say a small town to me. The writing itself was nothing special, not too bad either. I noticed a couple of things that could have been done better. For one, Ainsley tends to repeat herself. First, she explains to you how she came to live with her adopted dad in her internal thoughts, then she explains it to other characters and then to another character, and then she thinks about it again and here just they're like, we know all of this since like page three, why do we have to read it again? I only remember one typo and that's because it was it made me laugh. At some point she goes I think it was petty eating. I didn't note that down, but Petty woofed down her food like a stray dog. I guess she was hungry. First of woofed, okay, that's that's a new way to eat your food. And then the redundancy, obviously. I guess she was hungry, yeah. No, that's that's just how she eats in company. Face on the plate, just go yeah. That's not the only place where you get some redundancy. Like she gets to visit the place she was dreaming about at some point, and Archie leads her after telling her, yeah, this part of the mansion is closed because I mean there are only two people, we don't need that much space. So he leads her there, unlocks the door, and she's like, oh, I could tell right away that this part of the house was not in use. Oh, could you? What gave it away? Him telling you so, or the key? One fairly minor thing that threw me off, you get a section where she goes jogging with her dogs and saves a kitten that is just randomly sitting in a bush. She talks to an the animal rescue, and they tell her to eventually go back and look for the other kitten. Well, they do it, but they don't find anything at first. So you get this quite elaborate section with her saving the kitten, taking it back home, making sure it's all right, making sure that the neighbors may want to adopt it. And it's quite long for what it is. And then at some point, a second kitten has been found and turns up and it gets barely one sentence. It's just suddenly there and then forgotten about. And I'm like, hold on, you can't make this much fuss about one kitten and then just drop the other one in there like it didn't matter. Further on the kittens, her neighbors adopt those two. 
and they have them for like maybe two days when Ainsley stops by them and says, oh, they settled in just fine. It's like kittens that are born in the wild are happy and house trained two days into being with humans? I don't think so. I never had to socialize a cat, but I don't think that works this quickly. So overall, it felt like you spent about half the book with Ainsley just getting to know the area, her neighbors, make new friends, and then solve this one case on the side, mostly through the others, not her own work. And then taking a small glimpse into the mystery that her past is, where you don't really learn anything about it yet either. So overall, I think it deserves this cat. It wasn't spectacular, but it wasn't bad either. But all in all, I think I will only keep reading this if I ever find myself with too much time. And the yearning to find out whether she gets together with Adam or not, my guess is yes. And for that alone, I'm already like, I don't want to read this love story. I don't want to read this B story while some case is being solved by your neighbors. So. Do let me know in the comments if you've read a cozy mystery where there's no insta attraction, no insta love, or maybe no love story at all because I would like to read it. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out. And I'll see you next week with another video. Bye guys!